All right, so we're going to take a look at some electrolytic cells, which involve the process of electrolysis. And our galvanic voltaic cells, they used thermodynamically favored processes in order to get electrons to flow through the wire and give us electricity. But as you can see here, electrolysis, we produce a chemical change in an electrolytic cell and this is happening because current, we're f using electricity to drive a non-thermodynamically favored process. And there's two types that we're going to take a peek at here. All right, The first one is electrolysis of molten salts. And this happens in our what's called a downed cell. And when we do this, we can obtain metals, usually like sodium, lithium, magnesium, calcium, from chloride salts. So you can take sodium chloride, melt it, make it nice and molten, and then by using this down cell, we can create chlorine gas and liquid sodium from that sodium chloride. Now a couple things to note. All right, first at our anode, and cathode. All right, even though it's a non-thermodynamically favored process, please note that at our anode we are still doing oxidation. Okay? And so here we see that the chloride ions are being are losing electrons are being oxidized and becoming chlorine gas. So again, oxidation. And at the cathode we are reducing sodium ions to become sodium atoms so again you can see that reduction is happening at our cathode just like it did for a voltaic cell all right and these uh, cells have some historical importance too as you see here this is how sir humphrey davy discovered sodium he did the electrolysis of sodium hydroxide so not only can we do this with chloride salts but you can see here we can do it with hydroxide salts as well the other important cell that we look at or talk about is electroplating of metals and so whether we're doing this for protection or for making metals prettier for jewelry, you put a, a layer of uh, um, metals, uh, the desirable metal as you see here, onto the object that you want to plate. So whether it be like galvanized steel, putting a nice uh, thick coating of zinc on top of the steel, or plating jewelry with copper, gold, or silver, and this is what we're going to be doing in lab. We're going to plate copper onto another metal, probably brass. Um, but you can see here again, we've got this cell set up. And once again, note that at the anode, oxidation is occurring. Zinc metal is turning into zinc ions in solution. And at the cathode, we are having zinc ions from solution plate onto that metal. Okay, and that's reduction, the reduction of the zinc ions. So again, always make sure no matter voltaic or um, elect electrolytic cells that our anode is where oxidation occurs and our cathode is where reduction is occurring. Now it's a little different here. You can see that we don't have two separate cells. We just have this all together as one. You've got a piece of zinc metal in zinc sulfate solution and then another piece of metal. They're connected by a wire and our zinc ions from solution are going to plate onto that metal. And again, like I said, you'll see this when we do this in lab coming up. Alright, so our last little topic of electrochem is the fact that we can do some stoichiometry with our electrochemical processes. Usually you see it through the eyes of electrolysis, but that doesn't mean that's the only thing we can do. We could also potentially do some uh, stoichiometry with a galvanic cell as well, but we'll look at it through the eyes of electrolysis. And this all comes about because of our good friend Mr. Faraday. And of course he showed us that the amounts of substances released at electrodes during electrolysis or during, during an electrochemical process, they're related to the total charge that flowed into or, or flowed through the electric current. A beautiful stoichiometric, sorry, it's the end of the school day, stoichiometric relationship.
So first, either remember from physics or ninth grade or some other time, or learn that our electrical charge is equal to electrical current times time. From a unit's perspective, our charge unit is coulombs. Our electrical current unit is typically amperes. And then in order for this to work, our time must be in seconds. Now we typically rearrange this equation and set it up as current equals electrical charge over time. And this is the lovely equation that you'll see in your test taking packet. I stands for electrical current, Q is for charge, and T is for time. So let's use this in some stoichiometry here with some sample problems. So first of all, what current would cause a 42 Coulomb charge to build up over 84 seconds? So this is way simple plug and chug. Charge over time, Coulombs per second, and that is our definition of an amp. So this is a half amp. All right. Now, with a lot of this electroplating and stuff, we typically have smaller amounts of metal that is being plated. So here we see 404 milligrams of copper is deposited during electrolysis from a copper sulfate solution. So if a constant current was applied for five hours, what was the magnitude of that current? So we know how much was plated, and we know our time, and so we can do some stoichiometry. Now what's important here is our good friend Faraday, he gave us a constant, and if you remember it's 96,485 coulombs per mole of electron, and you'll see that here in a second. But it's per mole of electron, so when we're looking at these processes, we need to know how many electrons are being transferred. So from copper to sulfate, I know that because it's CuSO4, so my copper is a plus 2 ion, and it's becoming copper metal, so I know that this is the process that's going on. It's involving two electrons. So now I can do stoichiometry. 404 milligrams divide by 1,000, and so we'll get 1, 2, 3, 0.404 grams. It's just easier to start with grams, I think. But you could always do a conversion factor involving milligrams to grams. So I've got 0.404 grams of copper. I switch that to moles because that's what we do with stoichiometry. And then here's where I put in then one mole of copper is involved with two electrons being transferred. And then I finish up here with my Faraday's constant, and I told you you'd see that here, 96,485 coulombs per mole. That is what we call one Faraday of charge. And so why am I finishing with coulombs? Because that's what the question asked, what was the magnitude of that current? All right. So first, because I want to be plugging coulombs into my equation, right now this comes out to be 1,230 coulombs of charge. All right, and so now I can go into my plug and chug mode. I is equal to Q over T. I've got to do coulombs per second, so make sure I change my five hours into 18,000 seconds. And I get an answer of 6.83 times 10 to the negative second amps, or 0 0.0683, which, again, because we're talking little numbers here, you can call that 68.3 milliamps if you would like. Here's another lovely question. When molten lithium chloride is electrolyzed, lithium metal is liberated at the cathode. How many grams of this lithium would be liberated if 5,000 coulombs of charge pass through the cell? So again, I want to know how many electrons are involved. So lithium chloride, of course, lithium is a plus one ion. So our process here is involving one electron, lithium ions being reduced. And so this time, I'm starting with my 5,000 coulombs. I switch that to moles of electron using Faraday's constant. And then one mole of electron for every mole of lithium that we create. And then I finish with the molar mass of lithium. 
And again, I get a teeny tiny amount, 0.3596 grams, or 359.6 milligrams. All right, so again, we're just using different aspects of this uh, Coulomb's charge and the I equals Q over T relationship in the previous problem. Here's just straight up stoic going from Coulomb's to grams. All right. Now here's another one. Here it says how many grams of oxygen are liberated by the electrolysis of water if we use a 0 0.0565 amp current and we do that for 18,500 seconds. All right, so basically when we pass electricity through water, we will break it down, yo. Wicka wicka. <laughs> Sorry, again, it's late. So water breaking into oxygen and hydrogen. So the first thing you should probably notice is that we need to balance this equation. And I need to know how many electrons are uh, involved in this process. And so for me, I'm going to look at my oxidation numbers. So in water, hydrogen is plus one, oxygen is minus two. They're both turning to zeros. And so I can see that I have four hydrogens. So that's a plus four charge. And over here, it goes to zero. Or I can look and say, hey, I've got two oxygens, which is minus four. And over here, it goes to zero. So either way, hopefully you can see that there is four electrons involved here with our process of breaking the water down. And so how I'm going to attack this problem, because I want to get two grams of oxygen, which is the reverse of what we did in the last problem. But first I need to know how many coulombs we have. So my charge is equal to current times time. And so when I do that, I see I have 1,050 coulombs. And now the problem is exactly the same as the last one. Sorry, I think I said reverse, but now my problem is the same. Going from my charge, I can easily get to grams, because I can use Faraday's constant. And then here is my four moles of electrons involved in producing one mole of oxygen. And that comes directly from my balanced equation here. And then I finish with the molar mass of oxygen. And I get, again, a very small amount, 0 0.0871 grams or 87.1 milligrams. So hopefully these practice problems, or sample problems, sorry, will help you with your electrochem practice problems, part six, I believe we're on, and then also with some of the calculations that we'll need when we're doing our electroplating of copper lab. All right, hope this helps. See you soon.